Welcome to NXT. Sorry if I sound a little stuffy. Sinuses. Oh. Anyway, what did we get in this show? Building into Deadline, I believe that's the pay-per-view they're going to be doing. And I got my brief thoughts on what HBK said about the Iron Man, well, the Iron Survival Challenge. I believe that's what it was called. Now, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to say it right now. I didn't catch everything he said. When he came and showed up is when I had to go to the bathroom. I, I was holding it for a while. So by the time I came back, it was at the latter, latter half of when he was trying to explain the Iron Survival Challenge. I believe that's what it's called. And I got a brief thought on it, but I'm going to tell you right now, since I didn't get all of what he said, I could be wrong in my interpretation of it. And I believe I will be. But what bit I did here, it made me think of something else. So I'm just telling you what my thoughts are for what part I could see and hear that they showed. I'm probably wrong and I'll probably get more information later and I look like I have egg on my face, but I'm just going to give you what I thought. Now, Braun Breaker versus Von Wagner. Was it a good match? It was all right. And I was surprised that it opened the show. I would have thought Mandy Rose and Abba Fire would open the show because that's important. Having a last woman standings match takes a couple of minutes. You would think they would open the show with it, not close with it. But I can understand why they swapped it because when you see the match, it wasn't like the match was 100% trash between them. But you can tell they're both green. Well, in the sense that you got one guy who's been doing this for roughly a year. You got another guy who's probably been doing a little bit longer than him. And when you really compare the two, they needed a veteran in, e in either side. In other words, Vaughn needed a veteran and Braun needed a veteran. Having two green guys doing a high-profile match in the very opening, you know what's going to be great. The chemistry was a bit off, but they did a standard match. It was just standard. In the end, I wasn't surprised. Von Wagner was going to lose. He did throw Mr. Stone right when the bell rang. And that's the thing. Why didn't the, why didn't the ref throw it out? Because by throwing Mr. Stone at him when the bell's rung, remember, no one. And this is what WWE is rewriting this shit. When the bell rings... You cannot touch any of the opponents. The moment you do, you lose the match. So Mr. Stone being thrown at, at, at Braun Breaker, Mr. Stone should have DQ'd the match. And basically, Braun should have won because that was his own ally. Flat out, it should have been over and Braun should have automatically won because it was right after the bell rang, Mr. Stone's thrown at him, which was dumb. But they kept going with it. That just shows WWE doesn't even follow their own damn rules. And the match was, like I said, standard. Now, after the match was over, we had Apollo and McDonough approach a Braun Breaker. Braun was weakened, so both of them wanted to make it very clear that now that you got that challenge over, it's our turn. So, okay. Fine with that. But I was hoping that they would build up into it. Nope, they got a match later. And I'm getting the match done now. Because it doesn't matter where they want the card. You put two guys who didn't need to lose up against each other for no number one contendership. When you see Apollo, who's been slowly being trying to build, be built up. And then you see McDonough, who's really had some really good momentum. Each one of them should not be facing each other. But what did we get? And this was what was the, um, in the it was the third match of the night. You put both of them up against each other, and when you look at the damn match, they did not have very good chemistry. In the very beginning, they looked choppy as fuck. We know Apollo Cruz is a good good wrestler. We do. We know McDonough is a very good wrestler. He's actually when you look at Apollo Crews and you look at McDonough, I can't remember his first. I think it's PJ McDonough. McDonough's here. Apollo's here. In flat out pure wrestling, this is what you got. When you have, when it comes to having more like um, a spectacle, a lot of show, you got the reverse. You got Apollo, who's very good at showy stuff, and you got McDonough, who's not. So you got... 
both of these, and you would think they would work pretty well in the very beginning. Nope. It looked choppy as fuck in the very beginning. It sorted itself out mostly near the end when it was good. And in the end, Apollo wins, which you're pushing McDonough, but then he loses to Apollo. And if the reverse, if Apollo lost, you put him over McDonough. You should have never done to either one. Particularly, there was no number one contendership. Yes, you got Braun coming out after the match and staring down on Apollo Crews. But what does that mean? What does that mean? Does it mean you're going to get a match now or a deadline? Maybe they'll book it, but that, that shouldn't have happened. It shouldn't have. Now, the second match of the night, which was showing um, in this share. That's it. That's fear and um. It's fear and sing. I can't remember the names very well. They came out in garb that's similar to Samoans, and they're both Indian, but they're both dressed similar to Samoans, having a garb, making you think that they're Samoan when they're not, and they basically. You. Totally obliterated two guys. They they obliterated two guys. That wasn't just a burial. That wasn't just destruction. That was obliteration. They obliterated. One of those guys got thrown so hard, he literally hit his head on the damn mat hard. The way, I think it was Singh who threw him. And he literally hit this side of his head really hard, I believe. It didn't look good. He still kept going until they annihilated them both. They look good, and then they're trying to talk about what they want to do next, and that's going against the creeds. And the creeds did respond after that. But do I care about either one of the teams? Do I care about the creeds? Yes. But do I care about Ignis share? I don't know. This is the first time we've actually seen them the way they are, at least for me. Really working together as a team, wearing the same ring attire. They really need to build up as a team for the first time before they're throwing them at the crease. After what happened with, with um, when you look at Damon Kemp and dealing with Brutus as well as Julius, <coughs> you would think you would give them time to go to another team and let these guys, Ignis Share, build up to go at them. No, they're ready to start at them. They, I don't agree with this. This is rushed. Unless they're only just going to slowly build up into it and it will culminate in, I believe, the deadline. That's the name of the pay-per-view. Then I understand at least a little build, but a waste. Here is something that was, I'll say, was okay. Zoe Stark's promo. Now, from what I've seen of Zoe, she's not very good in the promo. She never has been, for what I understand. She's okay, but she's never great. But I'll say this, at the very end of that promo, her rage actually worked in her favor. She made it very clear. She tried to make the entire thing with Nikia Alliance work. She was ready to go up against Mandy. They brought her in to the office and made it very clear they're going to do the tournament for the tag titles, and she was thrown together with Nikita Alliance. She said, okay, if I'm going to be stuck with this, after I finish with Mandy, maybe I'll get something. And... She basically made it very clear it's all about her. And basically says clearly that Nikita, after she got hurt and had to go on the shelf for a couple of weeks and couldn't participate in, in doing what she needed to do, you get Zoe having a shoulder touch by, um, well, I'm not going to say that I wouldn't love to have Nikita Lyons touch me on the shoulder. I would love her to give me a kiss on the cheek and say, you're my husband now. <laughs> But when you see what she said saying that I don't blame you because she got hurt. Was the promo good after that? I'll tell you this. It was choppy. She was trying to ha really heal it up. But she was a bit too choppy at the very middle of that type promo. It was only when she got rageful did she stop stuttering a little bit and focus on making it very clear she's angry not about not getting the tag titles but tired that she had to be dealing with someone who was not really putting a great effort in and it was good there was no there was no Nikita Lyons there 
So maybe next week or the week after, she will appear. And they'll probably have a match at deadline. But at least there was no Decay Alliance. And the rage wasn't too bad. Now, we got Jensen and Briggs versus Schism's Dyad. Now, I'm going to tell you this. Do I care about Briggs and Jensen? No. Do I care about their partner who's in a storyline with um, with James about trying to sell her bar? No. I'm, I'm not even interested in seeing that James might be, good, well, it's going to probably sway a little bit of, I think it was, it was Jensen because Jensen likes her. I believe so. It wasn't Briggs. And he was the one who had to eat the pin. I'm not interested in that either. But do I believe Dyad is over? Yes. Do I believe Schism is over? Yes. But do I believe Ava Rain is over yet? No. Sooner or later, she's got to wrestle. And do some more segments by herself. Even with Schism behind her, she's got to do the segments. By her just being there, it's not enough. She needs to do more, even though she is well over because of being a Rock's kid. That's it. All right. Um... Was the contract signing good? Here's where it gets a little bit cray-cray. I'm going to say it in disrespect. Was it cray-cray like it was crazy, it was great? No, it was cray-cray cringe. Because the person that made it cray-cray cringe was Booker T himself. Look, I love me some Booker T. I love it. But the way that he went and did the presenting of the contract seemed he went overboard. He was, I know if he was trying to put the entire segment over, fine. But the way he was acting kind of overpowered Hayes as well as Wes. It, ju it just felt that way. And the person who didn't help at all was Trick Williams. Look, if you like Trick, great. If you like Tricky Williams, great. Me, I don't believe he should be working with Carmelo Hayes anymore. I think Carmelo does not need this guy anymore. Not because he isn't a good wrestler or he has the ability to talk. He does have the ability to talk. Wrestling is so-so from what I've seen. I've only seen him a couple of times. But at this point, Carmelo does not need a hype man. He's able to handle it himself. And at this point, Carmelo Hayes with Trick Williams just feels like it's a detriment. It, you know what I mean. He just feels like he's weight. And I'm not knocking the guy. But in this segment, he sucked. He just didn't feel like he needed to be there. And I'm sure people would say, well, he's supposed to be comic relief. He's supposed to be a yes man. Yeah, but how long can you do a yes man when you really needed Carmelo to feel legitimate? And once Booger T put his two cents in trying to make it important, and he felt like he was trying too hard to put them both over, to start interviewing them both, trying to find out, who wants it more? Why is it so important to you, Carmelo? How is it so important to you to keep your title west? It felt like he tried a little too hard to make them important. Now, he did do well at the very end of it when Carmelo and Wes was ready to go and throw down. And they were ready to body one another. And pretty much, Booker T made it very clear. No, you ain't bothering. You're not going to body either one of you. You are going to do this. You're going to do it next week. You're not doing it here. And it sounded good, but then it needed something to back it up. That was the major problem with that entire part. That, yes, Booger T made it very clear to both of them as a legend, as someone that they look up to. That doesn't mean shit. They could have thrown down right there. They needed a stipulation that they don't touch one another because it's happened before. Wes got his head wrapped around a locker room door. I mean, a locker, a locker door. They did it. They even said it. So, it would have been better to have a stip that says, Carmelo, you cannot touch him. That's the deal. You touch him, no match. I'm just saying, that that is how it felt. Because they're ready to body his ass, and that's Wes. I'm just saying. Um. Let, let me say it like this. I'm not going to talk about the... Uh, how can I say this when it comes to Hartwell's match? I don't recognize the woman that she went up against. I think her name is Packy. I've only seen her maybe once. 
But here's the thing. This isn't about Packy. This is about Hartwell and her rise and how vicious she's becoming. And even... Well, when it comes down to Roxanne dealing with her, the thing I want to say is this. Are those two going to basically have a match? Yes, it's going to happen. They'll probably do it at the tournament. But do I care about it? I don't know. I, I don't know if it's going to work or not. I don't know. That's the best thing I can say about it. Now, HBK. I got to say this before I do the last woman standings match. HBK, when I... I went during the commercial to the bathroom. The moment I came back, he was already on screen and he was already talking through the remaining part of what the Iron Survivor challenge. And the way he described it, and I didn't hear all of it, it made me think of one thing. Now, I'm not saying it is. It just sounded like it because I didn't catch all of what was stated. The only part I heard was about 25 minutes and about going into a cage to qualify. After you qualify as something. That's what I heard. So. The one thing that went through my mind. And I'm not saying it is. But it sounded like it. The King of the Mountain match. Now supposedly both. Men and women are going to have the same type of challenge. The same type of iron. Survival challenge. I believe that's what it is. It sounded like the King of the Mountain match. Now I'm not saying it is. But it sounded like it. But until I hear more about this match, which is supposed to give a number one contendership to either, either the women, well, it's going to be for the men and the women's world championships of NXT. I don't know what it is fully. You guys can leave a comment below what you think of the match. Does it remind you of the King of the Mountain match from TNA? Because maybe a little bit of Jeff Jarrett had might have gave a little bit of information that they said, you know what, before he left, you know what, Jeff, we're considering doing something soon. Why don't we take a little bit of the concept you came up with, came up with with the King of the Mountain and we'll make it for NXT. I'm just saying, but I'm not sure if that is the concept, if it has been tweaked or if it is or isn't. I'm just saying. I believe it had been tweaked, but it might be the basis of it. Now, final, which I truly believe should have opened the show. Even though the match there made sense, it should have opened the show because it could have had more time. And that is Abba Fire versus Mandy Rose in the last... It was at 9.54. Going into 55, guys. 9.54 to 9.55. We got this match. It lasts until about, what, 10.05, 10.04? So it was almost 10 minutes of a match that should have opened the show and should have been the focus of it. Or at least you would cut the show short to give these women more than 10 minutes. I'm just saying that it felt like a waste. It should have been left for a pay-per-view, to be honest. If you weren't willing to open the show with it and give them more than 15 minutes of time, or if you weren't willing to shorten the rest of the show and made it about Mandy and have a fire. This should have been saved for a pay-per-view. It should have been. It should have been saved for, for Deadline. I believe that's the title of the thing. I keep forgetting the name of that pay-per-view. I believe it's Deadline. I just... I, I, I don't know why they did it. Were, were their ratings that bad? They felt they had to have this match instead of throwing Ron Wagner and Braun Breaker at the very end of the show. Yes, it wouldn't have been good. But at least it would have been there and it would have made more sense to have it there than the opening of the show. And they could have saved this match for the women at their pay-per-view. Was it a good match? I'll tell you this. It was choppy. And it was sloppy. I'm not going to tell you it was great. Look, I've said and I praised Mandy Rose for the last year she's worked her ass off to make herself mean something. It's one of the rare instances. One of the rare ones, guys, that Vince did a decent job with one talent. He gave her the opportunity, and she's worked over a year to try and make herself mean something. 
She busted a butt for it. Whether you like or not, yes, you're, you're going to love these. You're going to love the face. You're going to love these. You're going to love that. Yes, guys and girls are going to love it. But did she actually perform well? Did she do her ring work all right? Did she actually tell a story in a ring? Did she actually do promos correctly? Can she even talk on a damn mic? And over the last 8 to 10 months, she has. And at this point, after a year, she's done well enough that she probably should have dropped the damn title and gone off to the main roster at this point. She's good enough now. But when you see this match, you wonder, did she actually learn anything? Because when Abba fire, and understand, this is supposed to be that you can't get up. When Abba fire took a metal rod that was from the ring, she had it and put it into a boss, well, not Boston crab, she put it into a single leg crab. And she was holding that under her knee, right where the hamstrings are. Well, not the hamstring, right under her knee. And was pulling. You would expect Mandy to sell that shit on her right knee. Nope. She barely sold it, not until near the end. And that was sloppy. Because that happened in the very beginnings of the match. She got nailed multiple times, including over the, um, the advertisement when you saw it in picture in picture. You saw that Abba didn't mess with her. But then when Mandy came back, all that time she was walking around like nothing happened. And then eventually he decides to actually start selling it when it was already past the 10 minute mark. That was sloppy. In the end, I think it was, um, what was the name? Name Ali Dawn, who's supposed to be the witch of NXT, spit in Abba Fire's face and ruined it for her to get her title. Am I glad to see that? Honestly, no. I think it was time for Mandy to basically leave. I would have liked, this is what I think should happen. What should have happened, Abba should have won. Should have won the match. And then next week, or the week after, right before Survivor Series, guess who shows up on Raw SmackDown? Or Betty, or maybe it might be SmackDown better for her. Because she has done pretty well. That she goes there. And now she's going to be working with a damage control. No, no, damage control is not, not going to be able to do that. Because they already got... Um, I forgot my mistake. Because they already got damage control. Including a Nikki Cross. Because unless she's going to be taken out by Mandy Rose. The only other person... Only person that would make sense to be on Bianca's team would be a Mandy Rose. Put some respect on my name. She could work with them, even though she is heelish. But that's just me. And I hope you enjoyed this review. Please give me a comment below. I don't even know what I'm going to call this. Maybe I'll just put question marks on it. Because when you see this, some of it is built into the deadline. I don't know what all of HBK said. And I don't understand why this match between Mandy and Abba Fire didn't happen at the pay-per-view. I'm just going to put question marks there. I think that'll be the best thing. Peace.